In the previous units, we talked about some you know, ideas for optimizing and extending uh, both the hardware and software uh, elements of the hack computer. And in this unit, we'll continue uh, with a few more ideas uh, of this uh, sort. Let's start with JEC. There are many things that can be improved in the JEC language. And some of these things were discussed in the uh, perspective unit of uh, module uh, three, I believe, when we talked about the JEC language. Now, uh, what can we do? We can, uh, for example, we can make the syntax more friendly. We can introduce new commands like for and switch. Uh, we can extend the type system. We can add inheritance. We can do many different things. Now, each of these things requires uh, uh, you know, several different uh, uh, modifications. First of all, we have to modify the language grammar. We have to invent some uh, new commands like for and switch and document them in, uh, in the grammar. And once we do this, we also have to modify the compiler's uh, parser and the code generator in order, in order to handle this, uh, uh, these uh, new features of the language and generate code that actually uh, uh, realizes these uh, new uh, uh, language uh, features. Now, some of these changes are simple. For instance, you know, adding uh, for and switch are relatively simple. Some are more involved and some are quite challenging. For example, if you want to add real inheritance, you'll have to modify not only the compiler, but also the virtual machine. So that's one interesting uh, uh, direction to take to improve uh, the current uh, Jack language. Another thing that can be uh, quite interesting and actually could be a lot of fun is to implement a whole new uh, high-level language, an existing language, uh, or, or a new one that, uh, uh, that you may want to invent. For example, how about developing a scheme interpreter? an interpreter for the uh, scheme language. This could be a very nice project. So enough said about uh, software extensions and let me go back to uh, low-level hardware. One question that many learners uh, ask us is how can we build a physical implementation of the hack computer? You know, what will it take to actually commit the hack computer to silicon? Well, this could be done essentially in uh, two basic ways. The easy path is to, uh, well, easy quote unquote, is to emulate the HackJack platform on some existing device. For example, you can try emulating our uh, virtual machine on a cell phone or on some uh, PC. You can write a VM translator that translates uh, VM programs to the instruction set of the host cell phone or uh, uh, the processor of the host PC. So that's one option. The other option, which is more hardcore, is to actually build everything from scratch using real hardware. And in order to do this, you will need to do three things. First of all, you have to learn a subset of uh, uh, some industrial strength hardware description language like VHDL or Verilog. And then you can use this language to rewrite all the HDL programs that we wrote in Nanto Tetris Part 1. So once you do this, you will have, let's say, VHDL implementation, uh, implementations of the 30-plus uh, 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 chips that are needed for the chipset of uh, the hack computer. Then you can take a programmable hardware platform and commit these HDL programs uh, to it. And you know, I happen to have uh, one such uh, platform uh, in my pocket. So uh, uh, what you see here is an FPGA uh, board and FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. These uh, uh, very fancy boards can be programmed to represent different computers and different uh, digital devices. And uh, this, of course, is just one of them. There are many uh, such boards uh, in the market, and uh, uh, you can get uh, uh, these boards and use them to, uh, to implement uh, 
hack uh, physically. Now, the FPGA technology is remarkably powerful, popular, and affordable. You can get a nice board like uh, the one that I just showed you for far less than $100. And actually, when I think about it, you can also build this computer in FPGA without spending a penny. Just like we use the hardware simulator based on software in NAND to Tetris, you can use a freely available software-based FPGA simulator on your PC. And all the lessons that you will gain will be exactly the same, as valuable. So you'll be able to build the computer in FPGA without using FPGA. You'll be able to do everything on your own PC, if you want. Now, I'm somewhat concerned that what I described so far sounds deceptively simple. In reality, this FPGA implementation project is quite challenging. And it's challenging for several reasons. One of them is that it forces you to implement in FPGA all the built-in devices that we took for granted, like the memory, the screen driver, and the keyboard driver. You know, all these things that uh, uh, were available to us as built-in chips have to be designed and implemented in FPGA. And this uh, uh, is quite interesting and, uh, and challenging. Now, the good news is that one of our colleagues, Dr. Uh, Denny Seidner, who is a very gifted teacher and engineer, has already done all this. And so, together with Denny, we are now working on a new course that teaches how to build the hack computer, and for that matter, any other computer, using real hardware. So, at some point in the future, we will offer this uh, new course, NAND to Tetris uh, Part 3, I guess, in which you will learn how to build computers using uh, atoms rather than uh, bits. So, as you see, we haven't said the final word yet. Stay tuned. <laughs>